Have you ever spoken with an anti-fan on Twitter? And you will say something in the lines of, yeah, I don't think this TV show is good. I think it's really bad. And the anti-fan goes, what are you talking about? Look at the ratings. The media says that it's number one on Netflix or it's trending. It's, it's very popular. And you say, yeah, I think the ratings are shit. I don't believe the numbers. And the anti-fan goes, oh, that's a conspiracy. Conspiracy theory! Oh, you're like the flat earthers. You're an insane individual that would even suggest that a company would lie for a profit. We need to get you into a madhouse. You are a danger for society to suggest that a corporation would fidget the numbers. I even made a video mentioning uh, such a thing about Resident Evil. And look, I don't know how insane I am if I dabble into conspiracy theories, but what I do know is that I find it bizarre that a lot of TV shows that, to me, aren't entertaining, and they're very boring, and I know that entertainment is subjective, but like, come on! Come on! <laughs> Let's be honest here with ourselves. Intuition still works. Intuition has worked for my grandmother and god damn it it's going to work for me. And if I look at a movie and I say, yeah, it, it's probably bad. It's not, it's not going to sell. But then the media tells me, no, nonsense, like this is the most popular thing ever, soy face. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe the media knows something. Maybe for once my intuition doesn't work. But then you hear that they're not going to make a season two. Which begs the question, like, are the people at these streaming services mentally challenged? Do they not know business? Do they not hire people from the marketing department? Do they only hire people from the grievance studies? Like, how is it possible that if something is genuinely, like, topping the charts, it's not going to get a season two? And usually they come up and they say something like, well, you know, they just don't want to pay actors. Or... Well, people didn't watch it properly. You should have binged watched it. Uh, it took a lot of time for people to digest the information from that TV show. It was a very deep, very philosophical, uh, very uh, hard to penetrate. And because of that, people didn't binge watch it and the producers didn't get the memo. So that's why it's not getting a season two. I'm not kidding. That's literally the argument for Sandman. Or... Maybe the conspiracy theory is actually a spoiler alert. Maybe when you say conspiracy theory, you should replace it with spoiler alert because time and time again, it seems that the conspiracy theory started the right. My God, if we ever get a government in any country that is stacked with conspiracy theorists, it's going to push that nation at least 40 years into the future. Because they will just understand how things work. Given by the new definition, by, by seeing who gets accused of being a conspiracy theorist and then seeing that they're right time and time and time again, maybe we should actually embrace conspiracy theorists. Because look, Warner Brothers Discovery faces lawsuit alleging inflated HBO Max numbers. Oh, Dios mio, oh, the conspiracy theorists were right. <gasps> Maybe because conspiracy theory doesn't mean lying. I mean, it's not a synonym for lying, right? <laughs> you know? It, it, it's, it, it could be a synonym at this point for intuition. Like, things don't add up. How is it that it's so popular, yet it's not getting a season two? How, why? And this is very similar to what's happening with Twitter and Elon Musk. Elon Musk wanted to buy Twitter, and then he found out that there's a lot of bots, and they have a lawsuit because of that. Which goes to show that chances are, yeah, maybe they do have bots. In the case of streaming services, they don't need bots, but they can inflate the numbers. And in this case, HBO Max inflated their numbers in order to get a better deal on the market. Imagine you want to buy a YouTube channel. And you go for someone like The Quartering, which has 1.4 billion subscribers. Now, you're going to pay a lot of money for that. Because you get a big audience. 
You don't have to build it yourself. Now imagine you buy another channel which also has 1.4 billion subscribers, but then you find out that it actually has a hundred people. You'd be a little bit upset, wouldn't you? You you would get a little bit of buyer's remorse for doing that. And this is exactly what's happening here. Now, obviously, this is still within the lawsuit. Like, nothing has been proven yet. But is anyone going to assume that the company is delving into deep conspiracy theory for even alleging that HBO Max has fidgeted the numbers? Like, who would do that? Why it is impossible? Like, no human on the face of the earth has ever started a corporation and lied to people. That just doesn't happen, right? <laughs> Man, it is uh, so funny knowing that I'm right yet again. The only question I have, though, is like, when you go on the Twitter and you argue with an anti-fan, is the anti-fan, like, genuinely believing that it is impossible for a company to lie about the numbers? Or... They are aware that a company lies about the numbers, but they're trying to gaslight people. Like, they are salty. Because what I did notice, a lot of anti-fans, they genuinely like the new productions. Like, they, they literally like them. Not, not enough to watch them, but, but they view it like a football match. It's like, it's their team, and they want their team to win. So they get really angry when someone attacks the franchise that they support. For example... With Lord of the Rings. If you attack the Rings of Power plus Privilege, they get as angry as a religious person for attacking the Bible or Quran. Literally the same reaction. The same emotions that, that happen in a religious person's brain is what happens in the brain of an anti-fan when anyone speaks ill of, of their new franchises. Like, nothing is more toxic than getting into a Star Wars fandom and saying you don't like Rey. Like, the anti-fans are going to eat you up. Yum, yum, yum. So... When the actual IP fails, and it's painfully obvious for everyone to fail, I think the anti-fan deep inside, he understands what's happening. He just doesn't want to accept it. And this is why they get even more aggressive. This is why they get even more spiteful. And it's probably so that they can justify why more IPs that will end up in failure should be made. It's so that they can rationalize to themselves and to other people. No, you know what? Like Terminator, the last one that buried the franchise. The problem with it isn't activism, isn't the message. No, the problem with it is anything else besides that. With Rings of Power plus Privilege. Like the power isn't going to be the Mary Sue. Isn't going to be the fact that they disrespected the franchise. No, it's anything but that. Which is what we see with the Sandman. It's like, no, like the problem is that people didn't watch it properly. People didn't binge watched it. Had people binge watched it, it would get a season two. But because that didn't happen, right? So every single time you'll notice this thing. It's, it's everything besides the wokeness. The wokeness is perfect. Like, no, look, like if you have something and you make it woke, it will sell like pancakes. In, in fact, China will beg for it. But there are just other issues that, you know, they just keep popping up here and there. And then those are the actual issues which are making the production not ending up being successful. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.